today we'll be talking about chapter 4 of the uh, partnership act which deals with the relation of partners to third parties <clears throat> this has sections from section 18 to section 30 and three important aspects are there in this chapter one is about implied authority of partners to bind the firm by their actions the second thing is holding out the third important aspect is relating to minor admitted to the benefits of partnership here yeah? so the sections section 18 talks about partner being the agent of the firm then section 19 20 and 21 talk about implied authority of the partner to act as an agent then what are the instances where the implied authority cannot be deemed then extension or restriction of the implied authority of a partner by the contract or an agreement of or the agreement of partnership then authority of the partner in an emergency so these three sections deal with the implied authority along with section 18 it will be completed the relation of partners to third parties the most essential aspect of it is this principle which comes out as mutual agency so here partner to be the agent of the firm then implied authority of the partner as agent here we understand what is the implied authority then the section itself provides that implied authority except specified by contract cannot be deemed to be there for the following aspects so there are certain aspects which are listed out so these are statutory restrictions then through agreement again the partners themselves can modify this these are called as contractual restrictions so extending or restricting the implied authority can be done through the agreement but will that be effective and what will be the effect is something which will be covered in section 20 uh, then section 21 talks about authority in emergency so if someone does something in emergency uh, which in the normal circumstances he would do for himself acting for himself then that will bind the firm then act of mode of doing in act to bind the firm so that is talked about in section 22 then what is the effect of admissions by partners what he does or what he says that is in so far as the third party is concerned that is provided for in section 23 then notice to an acting partner by a third party will be deemed to be a notice to the firm and all the partners then liability of partner for the acts of the firm then liability of firm for wrongful acts of the partner so if someone has does a wrongful act then the firm will be liable to the third party here the the emphasis is all on the liability to third party then subsequently what happens if the firm is liable and someone and the firm is asked to pay up then you will have to go to chapter 2 to see that there is a provision relating to indemnifying the partners indemnifying the firm for the loss caused by at the person caused by the fraud of another person caused by the neglect will for neglect of the partner so those provisions in terms of taking money from him and indemnifying the partners will be you will have to see chapter 3 but here the focus is on liability to third party rights and duties with the third parties then section 28 is about the holding up that is someone will be representing himself uh, by his act word or conduct that he is acting on behalf of the firm so if he does that then the firm acquires it in it uh, or the third party acts based on that then the firm will be bound by it so this is the principle of holding out then <clears throat> sometimes the interest of the partner is transferred so what will be the rights of the person <clears throat> to whom the partner's interest is transferred that is covered in section 29 then special position of a minor in admit in, into partnership is dealt with in section 30 so now let us see individual section section 18 talks about partner to be an agent of the firm so again it says subject to the provisions of this act partner is the agent of the firm for the purposes of the business of the firm so here uh, the classic example is that of uh, mutual agency which i talked about so the same case of cox versus hickman will be applicable here where there was a committee of creditors uh, the company uh, the the firm b smith and j smith which was dealing in a, a business of iron workers and corn merchants they owed money to a lot of creditors so entered they entered into an agreement with those uh, creditors and then they entrusted the whole 
a task to something called as Stanton Iron Company to carry on the business and recover the money and uh, uh, distribute it so that the liability will be taken care of and no marking back of the liability to Smith. So Cox was one of the trustees. Uh, uh, Cox did not act as a trustee, but Wheatcroft, uh, who was also in the committee of creditors, acted as a trustee and then he resigned in six weeks, after which no trustee was there. This Hickman gave uh, goods uh, and drew three bills of exchange uh, and uh, sent it across to them. The bills were not ac were accepted, but not paid. So the file suit was filed by Hickman against Cox, and uh, it was indicated whether the relationship between the creditors is that of a partnership or whether it is not. So if it is a partnership, then uh, Cox will be liable. Uh, if it is not a partnership, then Cox will not be liable. So the court held uh, that whether there is mutual agency among the uh, creditors, then it said that uh, no, there is no mutual agency. Creditors did not operate the business. They only, the deed of arrangement is basically a mechanism to get the repayment of the amount and uh, uh, get themselves uh, paid for the money they owed to Smiths. So it does not fulfill the requirement of uh, partnership. So then it was indicated here that if two or more persons are to carry out a trade and share profits, each is a principal and each is an agent for the other. And because of this operation of person being an agent and the principal, is each is bound by the other's contract and carrying of a trade. <clears throat> as much as a simple, single principal would be by the act of an agent who was to give the whole profits to the employer. So this was what the court ultimately held. So a partner who transacts business for himself as principal and for others partners as an agent. So the partner basically operates in dual capacity. So he operates as a principal while he is acting and he operate, operates in, as, a, as an agent uh, insofar as binding the other partners are concerned. Then because he is acting as a principal, he, there is no general right of remuneration to him. But because he is a principal in it, he is entitled to a share of the profits. And partnership is basically a contract of mutual agency. It's one of the most essential elements of partnership. Now, what is the implied authority? So implied authority of a partner as agent of the firm. So subject to section provisions of section 22, which talks about uh, how, how do you how do you do something to bind a firm? That is what is provided for in section 22. So subject to the provisions of section 22, the acts of a partner which is done to carry on in the usual way, business of the kind carried on by the firm binds the firm. So the authority of the partner to bind the firm conferred by this section is called as the implied authority. So we will see what are the uh, various examples of implied authority and how do you presume that there is an implied authority. So where there is no express authority. So that's the reason why a partnership deed is very, very important where you draw up what is the authority of each person. But if you don't have that, there are certain presumptions which come into play, which will be provided, which have been provided for under the provisions of the Partnership Act. So if you have a partnership deed and a well-written agreement indicating the specificities, you don't have to look at or bother about the implied authorities. So implied authority, for uh, an act to be treated to be done with an implied authority, it should be an act done to carry on in usual way the business of the firm. So in the usual way, so here there has to be something uh, which uh, the, whether something is with implied authority or not, uh, you will have to see whether it is so or it happens usually depending upon the nature of the business depending upon the practice as far as that business as far as that business is concerned and the general usage that is there in conduct of the business so can there be an implied authority of to, to borrow in every uh, partnership firm so it depends upon the kind of business that is there so where there is a trading firm you are buying and selling goods you may need to have credit in which case there is an there could be an implied authority uh, to borrow Whereas there is a professional firm like a chartered accountant. So there, there need not be any necessity for borrowing because it's more of a uh, profession that is involved where you are dispensing advice or you are 
dealing with the documents, etc. So then an auctioneer who sells, so he merely uh, sells goods. Then a commission agent and engineering contracts, etc. They don't need to borrow. So here, if, if someone says that I borrowed with an implied authority, no implied authority will apply in these kind of cases. But some, if the firm is dealing in finance, then you can say that the ability to borrow is an integral part of uh, financing, provided the law provides for it. Then it can be treated to be uh, done with an implied authority. So partners have an implied authority to defend in legal proceedings against the firm and engage a lawyer. So this is basically necessary because my interest would be affected by the litigation. So I should be in a position to defend and I should also be in a position to engage counsel uh, advocate for dealing with uh, this litigation. Then what are the other instances where implied authority could be uh, uh, deemed is where to engage servants for doing the business, for buying goods on credit, then receiving payments, taking premises on lease, operating account opened by partners, and then if there is any problem, stopping payment, etc. So these are the things where implied authority can be assumed. So some of the cases that we can see are uh, cinematographic theater business was being conducted uh, and uh, the deed made it necessary that mandatory approval of partners should be there before borrowing. So there is an express clause in the agreement saying that there has to be an approval of partners before borrowing. In spite of that, one partner borrowed and misappropriated the money. So here it was held in this uh, Higgins versus Bue camp that there was no implied authority to borrow as the firm is of cinematographic business, but not a trading, trading firm. And there is an express clause in indicating approval. So the other partners are not uh, liable and there is no implied authority bor to borrow. And more importantly, there is an express prohibition or restriction uh, against borrowing subject. And they could borrow only with the approval of the all of all the partners. So that's, that's as far as this uh, Higgin versus Buchan case is concerned. Then in Surya Murthy versus Chandra Devi, Criminal prosecution for dishonor of checks for payment of dues by the partnership firm was there, was done. So then the payment is supposed to be made or the prosecution is supposed to be conducted. So only those partners who have participated in the business, they will be liable, but those who have not participated in the business will not be liable is what the court held. So those sleeping partners kind of the persons who are not actively involved in the uh, partnership firms, uh, business or financial dealings, they will not be uh, liable for dishonor of check. So where there is a specific mention then of the authority, then that is called express authority. So here where there is no specific mention, you are having an implied authority to do some things and bind the firm. So where there is an express authority, then the partner cannot exceed that authority. So something uh, so where there is no express authority and deeming that there is implied authority, the partner does something. Then if the firm and other partners subsequently ratify it, then it can be deemed uh, that this act has been done with implied authority. So section 19.2 talks about uh, what are the areas where there are, you cannot uh, uh, imply authority. So in the absence of any usage or custom of trade to the contrary, the implied authority of a partner does not empower him to. So there, if there is a usage custom or of trade, uh, which provides for implied authority in respect of these cases, then that is okay. But where there is no uh, usage or custom uh, of trade, so there cannot be you cannot assume implied authority in the following cases. So what are, the cases are also very typical. Uh, the end self-explanatory also that submitting a dispute relating to a business firm to arbitration is something which he a, a partner cannot be uh, doing because arbitration could result in an award uh, which could be uh, having implications so that freedom to decide uh, or submit a dispute to arbitration should not be exercised by one person it has to be done it has to be expressly granted to someone or it has to be done with the concurrence of all the partners. Then opening of a bank account on behalf of the firm is okay. But then in his own name, this cannot be deemed to be an implied authority. So if it is supposed to be done in the firm name, then it's a different thing. But 
there cannot be an implied authority to open the firm's account on behalf of the firm in my name. Then compromise or relinquish any claim or portion of a claim by the firm. So it's basically any money that is due is due to the firm that is all the partners. So one of the partners cannot say that I won't, you don't need to pay me this money. So other people's rights are affected because of which you cannot, uh, there, there cannot be a case for implied authority in, for compromise or relinquishing any claim. Then withdraw a suit or proceeding filed on behalf of the firm. So here also, the fact that the firm has taken up litigation itself is something which is of importance. So uh, someone going by himself and uh, then withdrawing the suit or proceedings will not be in the firm's interest. So this, you cannot assume that there is an implied authority for any partner for withdrawing the suit, which has been instituted based on the uh, consent of the partners or in accordance with the terms of the partnership agreement. Then admit any liability in a suit or proceeding against the firm. So if he's doing for himself, it's a different thing. But if a partner admits liability and if he is deemed to be having an implied authority, then he will bind the uh, other partners and the firm also into the liability. So this being joint and several liability and unlimited liability, it is not something that can be permitted to be done by a partner in exercise of his implied authority. Then acquiring immovable property on behalf of the firm, if, then uh, transferring immovable property belonging to the firm. So this uh, big commitments uh, need to be done with express authority and not or concurrence and not in accordance with assumed implied authority. Then enter into a partnership on behalf of the firm. So this is also something bring, binding the partners further into some other uh, legal relationship or uh, another uh, liability that is not something which a partner can do so these are the instances where implied authority cannot be uh, presumed unless there is a customer usage to the contrary now by agreement between the partners there could be an extension or restriction of the partners implied authority so the partners of a firm according to section 20 the partners in a firm may by contract between the partners extend or restrict the implied authority of any partner and when will this be effective one notwithstanding any such restriction any act done by a partner on behalf of a firm which falls within his implied authority binds the firm unless the person with whom he is doing uh, dealing knows of the restriction or does not know or believe that the partner to be a partner so the extension or restriction can be made by contract between the uh, partners for any partner what is the authority then suppose the restriction is placed will the restriction be operational by itself no because where some act can be deemed to be by implied authority then the third party has to be given the benefit of having that implied authority when can you not give him the benefit only when you make him make it known to him that there is this restriction and otherwise if the person with whom he is dealing there, if he is dealing with him as if he is an individual, then the partner, then the, it will not be deemed to be a, an implied authority because the person who is transacting, the third party who is transacting with this person does not even know that he is a partner of the firm. So in these two cases, the restriction will not apply. Otherwise, any restriction or extension has to be made with, uh, has to be communicated more specifically restriction because uh, if someone does something to the uh, to a partner, he wants the firm to be liable for whatever he has done to the partner. For that to be there, you impose restrictions and those restrictions should be made known. This is as far as the section is concerned. So then uh, a case in this regard is Mercantile Credit Company versus Garrod. So here the firm was engaged in garage, uh, garage and uh, repairing of cars. So generally in garages and repairing of cars, selling or buying of cars also happens normally. But here in this particular agreement, there was a clause which prohibited partners from buying and selling cars. So in spite of this clause, one partner sold a car and uh, that car, uh, while uh, he was selling, he didn't have a title. But after selling the car, he received the money. So the buyer came to know that this the partner of the firm did not have uh, uh, 
the the car did not have a proper title so he came back then he claimed money from the sleeping partner of the son not the he couldn't trace the partner who had sold him the car so he came to know about the sleeping partner uh, from the uh, firm and he claimed money from him so here it was indicated that the sleeping partner was liable because generally garages are dealing in cars and if there is a specific restriction from dealing in cars prohibition on uh, buying and selling of car that prohibition has to be made known to people and if that is not made known then you will not be in a position to deal with it so buyer did not know of the restriction and thought uh, that the partner operate, uh, operated as per the implied authority so here it was not the sleeping partner with whom we were dealing but an active partner so an active partner if you are dealing with and you don't know the restriction then you will be you can hold the uh, the firm liable but where he if you would have dealt with the sleeping partner then it is this person is not someone who is acting on behalf of the firm the other person would not know that he is acting as a partner in which case again the the restriction would not apply so here this is the provision as far as implied authority and uh, restriction of the implied authority then the restrictions and impact uh, so restrictions as i discussed statutory restrictions are in 192 what are the things that cannot be implied to be uh, cannot be done under implied authority then by agreement you could have restrictions and you could have extensions under section 20 so while statutory restrictions are deemed to be known and binding contractual restrictions or modifications need not uh, are not deemed to be known and they will be operating only when they are made known or if the person does not know of the person with whom he is transacting to be a partner at the time of the transaction then in case of an emergency if any partner does something then he should be in a position to bind the firm for such acts so that is section 21 so a partner has authority in an emergency to do all such acts for the purpose of protecting the firm from loss as would be done by a person of ordinary prudence in his own case acting under similar circumstances and such act bind the firm so here the requirements for binding the firm in case of an emergency is that there should be, there should be an emergency then the partner who is there has acted for protecting the firm from loss or from a uh, loss caused by the emergency and this action that he is doing is as it is done by a person of ordinary prudence if he would have been subject to this emergency what he would have done in under similar circumstances if he does that and uh, if it is reasonable then he will be binding the firm then section 22 is talking about the um, act binding the firm so what is the mode of doing uh, an act to bind the firm is what is indicated in section 22 in order to bind a firm an act or instrument done or executed by a partner or other person on behalf of the firm shall be done or executed in the firm name or in any other manner expressing or implying an intention to bind the firm so in order to bind the firm whatever is done or if an instrument is executed that instrument has to be executed by a partner or other person on behalf of the firm so here if you see the uh, definition of partnership any person or his agent acting on behalf of all so if another person also could act and if he does this act or if he executes the instrument in the firm name or if he does so in any manner to imply the intention that he wants to bind the firm then it will be treated as doing the act binding the firm so the act should be expressly or impliedly done so has to bind the firm so if it is doing uh, doing it in the firm name is a sure shot way of binding the firm then second indicating an intention to bind the firm for the particular act so if it is not done in that manner then it will not be that the firm will be uh, the firm will not be liable but the individual partner will be personally liable so some of the examples uh, uh, of court cases etc are signing of a bill ex- bill of exchange with managing proprietor and uh, as managing proprietor and indicating the firm name 
it was held that the signature indicated the status of person signing, but it did not indicate the intention of the person to bind the firm. So it was held that the person himself was liable. Then in executing a promissory note in the firm's name. So here, anything which is executed or done in the firm's name, then automatically it will be an act which will be binding the firm. So it was held that the act was binding the firm. Then receiving money by check in the firm name, by a person who was not a partner. So here, a person who is, uh, what is it, not a partner is receiving the check in the given in the name of the firm. And suppose subsequently he pilfers it and he uh, takes it, then the firm will be held liable. So here, the firm liability cannot be ignored. And the firm and the claim against the firm and partners can be enforced. So here, the principle of holding out also will apply in this particular case where the, uh, the person who was collecting the instrument, the other party thought that he was acting like a agent, an agent of the firm. So he, the, this principle is what is called as principle of holding out. So in accordance with holding out also, the person will be liable. Then section 23 talks about effects of admission by a partner. So an admission or representation made by a partner concerning the affairs of the firm is evidence against the firm if it is made in the ordinary course of business. So here, this is in relation to admission or representation. So whatever is said during the course of the business of a firm, that can be used as evidence against the firm. So the statement made about the existence of the fact, which includes even a misrepresentation, if made in the ordinary course, it is admissible and it is liable to be used. So suppose an acknowledgement of debt by a partner is given. So this is sufficient to extend the limitation period for the recovery of a particular debt. So this is not applicable to the scope of implied authority.